clipping that in there. Is that all right? Yeah. Is it okay? Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you. I uh, I just came back from Steam Dev Days a couple of weeks ago, and I thought uh, you know Ash kind of said, oh well, there is this meetup, and I thought, well, I could bring the the Steam Box and the Steam Controller. Uh, I don't know if anyone here has been to the Steam Dev Days. Anyone? All right, so I don't, I don't have any co-pilots then. <laughs> but uh, essentially, I will give you a quick overview of what they talked about, and then afterwards I will be available uh, to either answer any questions, and you can try out the Steam controller, which is just a prototype, and uh, the Steam box, uh, both of which we just got as goodies at uh, the Steam Dev Days. So that was quite a nice surprise. They called it the opera moment. <laughs> um, yeah, so let me start off uh, first. I mean, I got introduced already. I wrote a little game called Game Dev Tycoon, uh, which was first on the Windows Store and then we published on Steam and uh, has been doing quite well uh, on Steam, mostly probably due to sales, which is probably in all, all Steam games are like that. <laughs> but you know, when Steam announced the Steam Dev Days, that's the first conference they ever did themselves. Uh, I thought, oh well, that's a great opportunity. And it was invite only, which means you had to give, uh, be a game developer. There was no press, no journalists. Uh, there were 2,000 people and it was uh, quite amazing to just you know, walk up to anyone and the question wasn't what are you doing? Uh, the question is, what games are you working on? It was uh, quite amazing. Um, so I'll give you a, a quick recap of what the, the thing was all about. So why would Steam or Valve uh, you know, decide to suddenly host uh, a conference that they hadn't ever done before? The first day, essentially, they um, revealed this little thing, um, the Steam controller. Um, has anyone followed the kind of development of the Steam, Steam OS and Steam Controller? Okay, just to give you a little summary, essentially Valve decided, well, we will get into the console market, but in a, in a kind of roundabout way, in that we won't uh, generate our own hardware, but we will create a similar atmosphere as the PC has, you know, where multiple manufacturers can create a console. You plug it in, and then they have a thing, the operating system called SteamOS, and uh, at the beginning, at least, they provide the same controller. So the only hardware you get from Valve is this controller, and then you get a uh, console from different companies. Now they had 14 consoles um, that they just presented from Alienware, from all different companies. That's a, a gigabyte bricks, which is actually an uh, Intel uh, device. It has an i7 in there. Um, thing called Iris Pro Graphics, which is apparently Intel's new integrated GPU that is actually on the same CPU but uh, can do quite amazing things. Has a terabyte hard disk in there and uh, runs, you know, uh, full HD games, essentially, uh, quite nicely. Um, I couldn't believe how small that thing is when I first got it, but it's quite heavy. <laughs> uh, so they announced, essentially, the Steam Controller. It will probably be available later this year at some stage, all these all this kind of things. And the interesting bit is that, um, it, first of all, it's run, it runs on Linux. Uh, Steam OS is a Linux thing, um, and they heavily pushed that you know the future of gaming on PC is Linux, um, which is quite interesting if you look how few games there are on Steam that are actually run on Linux. Um, yeah, so that's coming out. We'll have heaps of choices as far as which Steam box you can buy. The nice thing is you plug it in, you log into your Steam account, and you have all games that are uh, compatible immediately from your library. So you know you kind of can play games both on your PC and on the thing. Um, they talked also a lot about user-generated content and how well it does at their games, like Team Fortress 2 or you know, Dota 2, where people create content for them, whether they're virtual hats or on, uh, other things. And the numbers were just mind-blowing of what they sell, just you know, and when people make uh, uh, nearly to a million dollars sometimes in, in just user-generated virtual content that you can sell. And they really want to push that kind of workshop support on Steam, where more and more games will provide uh, the ability to use mods or uh, user-generated content. Um, yeah, and it's they also announced a couple of changes to the Steam Store. Uh, it's quite clear that Valve is a data-driven company. They, they do everything by testing and uh, using tests and using data to kind of figure out what they want to do. Green light was one of the things, you know, where uh, users had to vote in games. And they stated that their goal is to get rid of green light entirely. And what, me, what surprised me in a way is that they want to get uh, rid of a curated store. Uh, so essentially they will turn the Steam Store in something where everyone can 
can make their own storefront and list and you know it's much more of a collaborative thing and it's much easier to get into which will uh, surely change that uh, entire system forever. Um, okay so the second day the, it was kind of a bombshell in that it was all about virtual reality. Uh, who has tried an Oculus Rift here? Quite a fair number of people. All right. I don't know about you, but the uh, Oculus Rift was the biggest gaming disappointment I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and not because it was bad, but because I tried it out and I felt sick. <laughs> like, I, damn you, you know, I want to have virtual reality. I don't want to feel sick about it uh, when I play a game. And the good news is that Valve at the moment has technology that, um, that is much, much better than the Oculus Rift, uh, where you likely won't get sick. Um, and I think there are some chairs here as well, if you want to come in there. Yeah. And the thing that they talk about is, you know, in games you, you talk about immersion, that you kind of feel immersed in a game. But with virtual reality, they talk about presence. And that's the idea that your body believes that you are in a different space. And with the Oculus Rift, at least if you tried the developer SDK, you know, it's quite clear. You can see pixels. You, you don't have all these features. It's kind of nice to look around. And you might feel like it's a 3D movie with a bit of head tracking. But it's nowhere near presence. The exciting news is, and they have worked for that for decades, uh, is that they have technology that allows presence today which means they had this test uh, room, and unfortunately I couldn't uh, try it out, but uh, uh, from multiple people who tried it out, uh, you know, one of the demos was essentially you walk into a room and you're in a canyon, kind of, a big canyon is before you, and there is a ledge. And the interesting bit about that was that the canyon had like texture, the textures that they decided wasn't like, high quality rock textures or whatnot. It was a screenshot from a website. <laughs> so, you know, the, it, there was, it, it looked nothing like high visual quality game-like thing. And the, uh, sl the little pathway that you walked onto was just really, really low quality Minecraft-like texture. But the amazing fact is that if you put that thing on and you walk up, people got, you know, got wobbly knees, were afraid of heights, all of that because your body believes that you're actually in it. And that's, uh, that's what they call presence in that sphere. And there are a whole bunch of things necessary to achieve that. It's quite impressive to have a list of 12 or 20 things or something that uh, need to be spot on for you to feel that. And that's, you know, you need to have a great refresh rate. You have a great resolution. You have absolutely flawless motion tracking. Um, you also have location tracking, which means that, uh, you know, if you have ever tried the Oculus lift, uh, Rift, you can look left and right. Uh, with location, you can also lean in so you could look at a little piece of on a, on a virtual desk and you lean in and it, it tracks you fully 3D. Um, the amazing news is that they believe that this technology will be commercial grade available in the next two years. And uh, the people who work on it, including Micah Brash, who uh, is of uh, Quake fame, um, absolutely believe that this will be the, the biggest revolution in gaming we have, will ever see. Um, interesting is that a lot of AAA games that we believe of as you know the standard of quality and experience, uh, like first-person shooters, are completely unplayable in virtual reality uh, because your body doesn't believe that you can run 30 miles an hour. It doesn't believe that you can jump over stories. It you know if you are hit by something and the camera pushes you in a direction, you will vomit. <laughs> and you know and uh, in the end, and I'm happy to discuss. Um, any questions you have after that because I uh, grilled them on, on the experiences they had, they had and the things they found. But the fascinating thing about the virtual reality change that will come is that the games will completely change. There will be new genres that will be invented just for that experience. And games that are doing really well, AAA titles, have no chance to be successful in virtual reality. Um, what they, like the takeaway, in general is that they are aiming for a seated experience where the player doesn't move. Uh, so you might have, and it sounds silly, but you know, uh, Euro Truck Simulator. It's a great game for virtual reality. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's probably not the, the most uh, popular game at the moment, but also fun ideas where they tried out Dota 2 uh, and they placed essentially this, or League of Legends, you know, kind of gameplay, uh, tower defense, where they placed it on a table in front of you. And 
and you, you actually believe that there are little creatures running around in front of you. You can look from all angles and kind of that stuff, you know? And obviously, controlling that is a completely different challenge, and there will be, you know, decades and decades before there will be a killer app that actually nails all of that. But uh, for me, it was mind blowing because we do only two and a half D games, uh, 2D games, and it's clear that the future is 3D, but not in a way we thought. You know, if you think 3D, you think, oh, great graphics, AAA things, <laughs> really beautiful language landscape or whatever, uh, but I, I grilled them a little bit and asked them, you know, what is actually exciting about it? And they said, well, surprisingly, those scenes that we think are impressive are not that impressive. What's really impressive if you see a tiny little robot in front of you and, you know, you see all the details and kind of that stuff. Like imagine Battle Chess, for example, <laughs> in a 3D sphere where you actually believe that this is real. Um, yeah. What are they calling this? The, uh, the 3D. The 3D. Well, it's just virtual reality. Yeah. Um, and they do... They had featured uh, Oculus Rift, so I believe that the hardware that will be out is by Oculus Rift, but it didn't say that. Um, and yeah, uh, this, all these talks will be available in a couple of weeks as well, or there might already be, so it might, might be worth checking out. So that was kind of the, the big announcements. First of all, Steam OS is coming, and that Linux will be the future on Steam. Um, and second, that virtual reality is coming fast and that it will revolu revolutionize gaming in a way that we haven't seen before. Um, yeah, I think that's it as far as high level overview goes. You're ha you, you know, um, maybe I give a very quick, do we still have a bit of time? Uh, I might give a very quick uh, overview of that controller so that you know later on when you try it what, what you see. Uh, as any, they tried to emulate a mouse and a keyboard. They didn't go with a normal controller and say, you know, how can we improve based on those two analog sticks that everyone has. Uh, and they tried trackballs, which is kind of funny if you look at it, and they had this huge trackball in the prototypes and stuff like that. And what they ended up with is this, which is two, two touchpads uh, that has a very slight curve. Um, when you try that, just be aware this is an early prototype. It already changed a bit and it feels cheap because it is cheap. <laughs> like, you know, we have a huge USB cable because it doesn't have wireless or anything like that. All the buttons are uh, digital. There is no analog button where you have like a way. It's just clicking. Um, but it has some slight haptic feedback, like when you, when you touch over it, it presses against you. And uh, essentially, this left here is uh, the, the, the equivalent of your WASD keys. So you can go left, uh, you know, I mean, there are more scenes on there. You can use it as a touchpad as well, but by default, and I think it will start up portal. You move with this thing, and then you use that to turn. Uh, interestingly, it's completely different from an uh, analog stick in that it's absolute movements. Like if you want to turn around completely, you have to do one, two, you know, kind of that thing. You can't just hold there and it will turn forever, which is, uh, yeah, very different. Um, but it works in all games uh, quite well. Like people played StarCraft on that uh, and, you know, it takes a lot of getting used to, obviously, because we're not used to that. Yeah. Have you had a crack uh, developing against it or did you play it? No, I tried my own game and it's, uh, it doesn't run well on that specific Linux distribution, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with it. But uh, uh, I haven't had much time yet <laughs> to look it into, into that. Um, yeah, uh, there was no non-disclosure agreement on the conference, so you can ask me anything and I will try to you know, uh, remember because I asked a lot of questions there. Do you think that such as Activision or the high player developers yeah. So the question was that uh, whether high-profile uh, developers will use that technology in the future, um, and I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think you know it would be quite silly of them not to look into the VR aspect at least, because uh, that's the other thing. The Steam controller is supported by Steam. You don't have to use it on a Steam box. You can use it on a computer as well. And Steam OS will introduce a VR-enabled checkbox for each game, so you can go through and say, okay, this is this is enabled. Um, I think it will be the same as any other technology. You know, it took half break in a way to, f to do a killer app with touch. Uh, it will take a, a while before someone does a killer app either with this controller or with VR or with both. Um, so that's quite a, an interesting aspect. Yeah, okay. Um, I think time probably for a couple of questions and then you can ask me afterwards anyway. Uh, so any questions now? All right, well then, thank you.